Hi friends, welcome to another important medical video lecture by All Unknown Law Team. Today we are going to talk about fundus examination that is fundoscopy or direct ophthalmoscopic examination. This is something which every doctor needs to know about and uh, this is something that can be done bedside direct ophthalmoscopic examination is assessment of the fundus that is the back of the eye using direct ophthalmoscope some important things that we need to remember before we do direct ophthalmoscopic examination are the first and the foremost is explain to the patient that you are going to examine the back of the eye and you will be coming very close to the patient's eye secondly make sure you do have a chaperone when you are examining the patients especially a male while examining a female patient or a female doctor examining a male patient always use the right eye to examine the right eye of the patient and use your left eye to examine the patient's left eye if you try to use your right eye to examine the patient's left eye it will be very very inconvenient both for yourself as well as the patient the fourth important thing to remember is to make sure the light in the room is dim so once you want to do a direct ophthalmoscopy examination to examine the right eye of the patient stand about one meter away from the patient on the right side and shine the light from the ophthalmoscope into the patient's eye you can see in the picture the light from the ophthalmoscope once this falls onto the retina you should be able to see the red glow once you are able to see the red glow that means you are in correct position if you see some black spots in the red glow it generally indicates some type of opacity it can be due to cataract or it can be a vitreous opacity or it can be due to corneal opacity once you see the red glow ask the patient to keep looking straight ahead of them and if the media is clear you will be able to see the optic disc which is the optic nerve head look for the size of the optic disc cup any blurring of the margins as you get in papilledema or any hemorrhages around the disc or for that matter look for any abnormality on the optic disc the second thing you need to comment on is on the blood vessels look for any dilatation narrowing or toxicity of the blood vessels as in case of vein occlusions you get dilated blood vessels in case of arterial occlusions you get narrowing of the blood vessels emboli sometimes causing the obstruction of the blood vessels can sometimes be seen then look at the macula if you ask the patient to look into the light of the ophthalmoscope the structure that you'll be seeing will be the macula comment on any swelling of the macula or any hemorrhages or cotinal spots or exudates in the macular area once you have seen the optic disc macula and the blood vessels look into the periphery of the retina by asking the patient to look into different directions like looking into the right left up and down so whenever you want to comment on direct ophthalmoscopic examination you need to comment on the media whether it is clear or not then the optic disc then blood vessels macula and finally the retina what are the advantages of direct ophthalmoscopic examination one is it is portable so it can be easily used bedside remember direct ophthalmoscopic examination is generally not done by the ophthalmologists because they prefer to do indirect ophthalmoscopic examination which is uh, a binocular examination and it gives stereopsis that is the depth perception 
direct ophthalmoscope he definitely gives better magnification compared to indirect and thirdly the image in direct ophthalmoscopic examination is as it appears to you that is it is erect whereas in indirect ophthalmoscopic examination the image is inverted and laterally reversed what are the limitations of direct ophthalmoscopy one is it is unicular hence you won't get a binocular view so there won't be stereopsis that is depth perception secondly the field of view is smaller so it is it is not an ideal way of examining the retina in detail like in peripheral retinal lesions let us look at some of the images and see what we find the image you, we see at the moment is the red glow that you should be able to see when you shine the light from the ophthalmoscope onto the eye from about one meter distance this is the red glow that uh, you should be able to see obviously this pupil is dilated well ideally for ophthalmoscopic examination pupil should be dilated with tropicamide drops with or without phenylephrine or sometimes cyclopentolate can be used as well to dilate the pupil this is the normal fundus that uh, you may see in a normal patient you can always comment the media is clear because you can't see any obvious black opacities the disc looks normal the margins look clear the blood vessels look normal the one which is more darker is the vein and generally the artery to vein ratio is 2 is to 3 in the diameter and then the macula is the, the central area that the slightly hi hyperpigmented area that you can see in between the superior and the inferior major temporal blood vessels then the periphery of the retina if there are any obvious hemorrhages cottonal spots or exudates you just need to comment on them in this picture you can obviously see a large blood in the macular area as well as just below the optic disc in this picture you can see some blood vessels on the disc which are radiating from the disc with some hemorrhages especially on the inferior side these are the new blood vessels at the optic disc and elsewhere which you can see in diabetic patients or vein occlusion patients in this picture you can obviously see the optic disc margins are not very clear the disc looks little bit elevated the margins are blurred whereas uh, the macula looks normal and there are no obvious hemorrhages this is the optic disc swelling that is the swelling of the optic nerve head if you look at the blood vessels arising from the optic disc you can see the the direction of the blood vessels changes once they cross over the optic disc that is one of the sign that the disc is swollen so if it is bilateral then it is papilledema and it needs evaluation another example showing the swelling of the optic nerve head that is optic disc edema you can see there are white areas which are cottonal spots with one or two hemorrhages around the optic disc obviously you can't see the cup which is again one of the sign of uh, optic disc swelling do go through the presentation on papilla edema by our team to understand papilla edema better so this is a short talk on direct ophthalmoscopic examination or fundoscopy this examination is a very common examination station for you in exams and it's uh, very important to know about it from practical point of view do subscribe share like and comment on our talks at all in law team thank you